Hi, my friends. Today we study this mechanism, the wedge experiment, which has a pedestal, a wedge, two counterweights, and rollers to keep the wedge at a distance from pedestal. This is the wedge. These are rollers, counterweights, and when I start the movement with the dynamic simulation, you'll see that this uh, wedge, this one, will go down and the two rollers will move away from each other due to the lowering of the wedge. You see, this is one moment, this is another and another. And this is the equilibrium moment. The wedge does not go down, even if nothing keeps it here but the roller. This is the real mechanism. You'll download it from uh, GrabCAD or from my site, as I uh, explained in the tutorial 187. You see all the construction. Nothing but the roller keep the um, wedge up. Let's apply the simulation by using the data which are recorded in the downloaded assembly. Yes, this is the original and I didn't make any change. Look here. That's all. It seems to be stationary. Yes, but it is not. <laughs> Let's take a look at the output grapher. This is the output grapher. I'll modify to see there and I go back in construction mode to have a fresh start. Everything is regenerated. You see there are two curves, but what does that curves show us? They show us the forces on the two rollers. And the forces are not equal. Why? Because these two counterweights are not identical. This is why. Yes? One is outside and the other is inside this ax axle. One is this and the other is this. Yes. We can uh, make a better uh, presentation, but let it finish. You see a vibration here. We can uh, see better, as I said, if we add a trace, a trace of uh, the center point of this cylindrical end of the wedge. We present the trajectory in uh, this image and we want to present it also in the output grapher. So I click here, OK. And now you see that trajectory. But to have it also here, we have to select the traces and this is what you know. 
and to present the positions, not the velocity, P. This is the position measured in millimeters from the bottom point. From 110 millimeters, which was here, to about 80 millimeters, which is here. If we enlarge this face and we go back outside in the construction mode, we can see what happens. Look here. As you can see, the vertical movement is slightly inclined and uh, at the end of the race, the fact that the two counterweights do not have the same mass makes a lateral movement appear. During all this time, the contact forces between the rollers and the wedge vary which indicates that a small contact vibration occurs. Good. Uh, well, uh, all these were uh, effects. Now let's see what are the settings to obtain that uh, um, simulation. We close the output graph, uh, we go back, also back, home to see all this mechanism and as you can see there are settings. This is a hatch, a DS, as a mark to which standard joints were uh, edited and which have proper settings. Let's go to this properties. What is this? This is the revolution between the pedestal and the wing right. You see where is this joint. The counterweight is uh, this one. Wing right. This is the wing right. And the pedestal is uh, here. So we have a revolution there. If we select degrees of freedom, the only one rotation, we see a position, we see an enabled joint torque not with diagram, but with dimensions. The radius in this uh, um, axle is four millimeters. The axle is eight millimeters diameter. And the coefficient is slightly high. I placed this high value here because I want to have a, a short uh, length of the sloped faces of the weight. Yes, I don't want to have here a long uh, sloped faces. The uh, uh, situation is the same. We create a moment of equilibrium. If this is like here or longer, it is not important. So if you want, you can change the angle of this and by, uh, by lowering 
yes to be longer and change the coefficient to a uh, lower value you can modify anything you want there is no any imposed motion here yes good the same is for the wing left not any difference you see the same four millimeters radius and the same coefficient Now it's about this. We open properties and we see again a, a great coefficient at the three millimeters, which is the diameter, internal diameter of this. Um, uh, roller bearing yes at a roller bearing uh, the coefficient is uh, almost zero so this is uh, a great value again in order to have that uh, length of uh, mm, movement uh, shorter okay okay f6 to see all the mechanism and i want to tell you that i added two contact joints only for you to make some change and see what happens this one is the contact between wedge and pedestal, yes, a 2D contact, yes, between this and this, and the other is the contact between these two arms of the wings, this with this to see when they are in contact, when they come to a collision. But when can this happen? It can happen if I modify the weight of the wedge, and I'll do this right here in the um, uh, dynamic simulation environment. Look here, double click, edit extrusion, double click on the sketch and modify this 34 this radius increasing it with only two millimeters from 34 to 36 this makes a, a, a heavier wing yes of course and if it happens the roller cannot uh, keep the wedge here and see what happens I'll, I'll present it like so and I'll make also perspective see what happens yes the wedge is going down very down, very low and these wings are moving in a chaotic way let's see once again what happens here 
right here. Here you'll see that these two collide and we see this, but not the collision between these two. Yes, that was a collision between this and is respected, but not a collision between the two wings. Well, we want to make something to see the collision between these two uh, wings. I go back from perspective, I go back with simulation, I go to construction mode, F6, and what do you think I should make? I'll make two sketches, one is this and one is this, with the two circles to create a 2D contact joint. The condition for creating a 2D contact joint is to have two closed contours in the same plane. Look here, I'll double click on this. I select extrusion, which has a sketch. And I see that here is a circle. We create a new sketch in a mid plane. The mid plane is this one. Yes. F7 project. I project the external circle but I want this to be construction and I draw a circle with this center and this radius. Okay, finish sketch, go back to the assembly and double click on the other wing, origin this plane, sketch, F7, project geometry, this arc, external, and now I don't need to create a sketch. This is, the projection is okay. I have to um, Close contours now. Okay. Insert joint. Which kind of joint? 2D contact. 2D contact. One is this. And the other is this. Okay. Now, we can uh, hide these two sketches, double click, double click on this, and the sketch 10, I don't want to see it, yes, finish this wing, we go to the other, double click, and the sketch 15 not visible. They participate to the dynamic simulation but we don't see them. The new contact is the fifth one. Yes? Wing left, wing right. Good. Let's see what happens now when the uh, Wedge is uh, heavier. I place it so. You see? This is the natural situation with the two 
wings. Yes, you can make a lot of other things with dynamic simulation. Uh, take your time to experiment anything you want to have uh, best the best knowledge of this uh, uh, important module in inventor professional that's all for today my friends thanks for watching bye bye